Welcome to the Lights in the Night Show with Russell Johnson, who wants to talk about and reveal what the United States government doesn't want you to know about UFOs and aliens right here in this country and around the globe. Russell has been following this material for over 50 years, and we'll have guests who will tell their stories from around the world. Take down the number to call in, 888-565-1470. Because Russell wants to hear your story. Our show also invites you to send your pictures and videos to UFO at amp2.tv so we can show them on our program at lightsinthenight.tv. Now let's get to the Lights in the Night subject matter and hear what the government has tried to keep quiet for over 50 years. Again, get ready to call 888-565-1470 and watch on lightsinthenight.tv. Now... Here's Russell with today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, the call-in line is open at 1-888-565-1470. 1-888-565-1470. Visit our website at lightsinthenight.tv. Join our chat room right now. And now, Dr. Russell Johnson. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be an interesting show. It's part two. Last week we had Billy and we had... Jane on from Hollow Earth, and they're going to do part two today. A lot of questions from Ms. Barrett here. Sarah, you have a lot of questions? Yes, sure do. We've got questions. We do. Um, Before we get started, we want to invite you to uh, visit our chat room at lightsinthenight.tv. We're live streaming on there, and any questions you might have, you can feel free to uh, start up in the chat room, and we'll try and get them on the air. And any emails, go to ufo at amp.tv. And we'd love to hear from you at 888-565-1470. So who do we have on today, Russell? We have Billy and Jane from Hollow Earth. And people can Google that information if you want to do some homework, some yeah. research. I believe their yeah. website is hollowearth.com okay. if you want to do a little bit of research while we have him on. Okay, great, great. Billy, are you there? Jane? Hello? Yeah, we're here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Billy is on. All right, Billy. Welcome back, Billy. Nice to have you. Yeah, nice to be on. Hey, listen, last week you had said, or Zareo did, that Admiral Byrd was given the cure to all diseases, cancer, diabetes, heart disease. What happened to all those cures that he was given? The government shelved them. Ah. They... And... Uh, President Truman uh, said he, he, put, he classified them top secret and uh, untouchable by the public. Wow. And why is that? Because you know, at the time, if the information was actually given out, it would have caused chaos uh, in the, um, in the pub- general public and would have caused um, uh, a lot of stuff to go on in, in government-wise. And uh, there's a, at that time, there's a, you know, as you know, there's a lot of money in research when it comes to the, when it comes to the um, cancer research and all that. Uh-huh. So, and that would have literally put them out of business. Okay. L- let me just touch on that, and I think Lady Barrett and, Sarah has a lot of, they they, they each have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let let me say that we talked about there's no such thing as death. The only thing we can discuss is ascending with or without the body. Is that right? There's no such animal. Go go ahead. Explain that for us, please. There is no death as you would term death. It is ascension. It's ascension to a higher plane. And it is not death. So when people say person dies, uh, that's a that's a miscon uh, that's an, uh, a false statement. They don't die; they ascend. Mm-hmm. Ascend to where? Well, to a higher plane. Uh, presently, the Earth is in uh, the lower levels of the fifth dimension. You, um, you had, of course, you, when you tell people that, they look at you like you're bonkers because they're, they're still stuck in the third D thinking. Mm-hmm. Does this apply to people in the hollow earth too? What happened? I mean, did they 
die or what happens? Great question. So that, do they expire or the, what happens with the, people, the people in the hollow earth? People in the hollow earth don't die. Um, when they come to a point where they want to uh, go somewhere else, they go somewhere else. Uh, they don't die, as you would term death. Uh, they basically just move on. When when we do, when we leave our bodies and ascend, do we have a choice? Like, if I was ascending, could I then go to Hollow Earth? You could. Ooh, that sounds fun. Hmm. Really, I have some. I mean, I was not here last week. I was on vacation, and I I don't know. I'm I'm still a little bit confused about this whole Hollow Earth thing, and. Uh, not to be rude or anything, but how do you reconcile this theory with basic geological principles, such as like the layers of the earth? And I don't, I mean, how do those two theories coexist? Well, or? when the earth, when the earth was formed, you know, and the rotation of it, the, uh, the matter from the center was pushed out from to the sides. And it left the uh, the central sun or the central or the core of your planet, which is actually a central sun. And uh, so that's how, that's the true makeup of the Earth, and as well the true makeup of all the planets in the solar system: uh, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, all of them, including the Sun. The Sun is not a star; it is a planet. Mm -hmm. It is not hot; it is light. Is there a hollow sun? Yes, there is. And there's beings living inside of it. Wow. Did the astronauts come in contact with any beings when they went to the moon? Yes, they did. Okay. Was and, that hushed and up? They asked, and they were asked not to return. Not to disclose that information. Yeah, they were asked not, not to, to come back to, to the moon. To the moon. Why is that? Because it's, it's, their, it's their domain. Oh, I see. I see. I see. All right. Interesting. I have a question. Um, I was reading there There were some expeditions that were going up to the mountain in the middle of the North Pole. And, and one of those, the group that left, was never to be heard of or seen again. Did they make it to Hollow Earth? Are they perhaps living in Hollow Earth? Or did they just disappear in their expedition? Uh, well, there have been expeditions that have gone, well, not expeditions, but being uh, people from the surface have entered through the North Polar opening into the hollow earth. Olaf Jensen and his father went to, into hollow earth back in the 1800s. Could we survive um, there if we were able to access? Of course. Uh, how, do you, how do people get to hollow earth? Say I wanted to go take a trip to Hollow Earth this weekend, how would I get there? Well, first off, if you, if, if, if you, uh, on the, uh, on the Hollow, on the, pardon me, on the site called Our Hollow Earth, and that's uh, Rodney Clough's uh, website, on there, there are pictures that show the trackings of the satellites that go over the, you know, the, and circle the Earth. And on the north and south polar regions, there is no satellites, period. There's no tracks going across the opening mm -hmm. of, uh, of the, and it goes into the Earth because there's no uh, air to hold them up there, no space to hold them up. It's, it's a void. And so when people say, traveling to the North Pole, they can't travel to the North Pole. The North Pole is in the center of a void. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. When you were base commander of Area 51... Yes? Did you ever meet Bob Lazar or John Lear and others who said they were also working there, too? Did you ever meet any, any of met those? Bob Lazar. Uh, John Lear never worked there. Oh, okay. Uh, but... John, uh, Bob Lazar worked at Area S4, and he was given a uh, tour of the, of the Area 51 facility, uh, of which I was uh, um, former commander of. And when he came there, uh, we gave him a guided tour. How long were you a commander there? 
approximately 11 and a half years. Holy cow. When you, you told us last week that when you first got there, you um, saw some very sort of discouraging things. We talked about the children and yes. the, missing them. What were the, some of the good things that you witnessed? <laughs> <laughs> well, those, uh, um, the healing uh, formulas or cures were being tested, and uh, they proved to be um, po positive that they were the cures for all the diseases. Mm -hmm. um, were these made so, from, like, plants and general things that we have around? Yes. You know, there is cures for cancer, even now, on the surface. Um, but, uh, of course, they're being suppressed. Um, and people that, that say they have the cure or know the cure, uh, if they uh, voice it, they're put away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, by the government. Uh, they imprison them. Uh, so they don't want uh, the cures no. out here. It's much like... They want to the control. Right. Right, big money, yeah. pharmaceuticals. Yes. Um, for instance, there's a, um, uh, a frequency machine that, uh, is out, is, is on the internet. It's called the, the gin and the super gin. And it's, uh, put together by a, a person in, uh, uh, Mount Shasta, California. And he's got them on the internet where you can buy them. What's and it called again? A super called, uh, gin, the, the gin and super gin. Uh, Rife machines. Oh, that's Royal Rife. Uh, Wilhelm Wright. Oh, Wilhelm Wright. Oh, wow. And 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 and. Uh, R I F E. Right. 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 Okay. How about no. Tesla? Tesla had a lot to do with creating all of that, did he not? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. But, uh, tes Tesla was actually an inventor uh, from the Hollow Earth. Hmm. How do you know yeah. that? What is there any like documentation or evidence of that? No. Then no. where does where does that come from? From my dad. Um, <laughs> we could uh, ask him. But, yeah. No, it's not him. Uh, <laughs> right, I got you. But uh, if you if you want my dad to come through, I can bring it forth. That that, that would be minutes. a good idea because listen, we are. Dealing with a lot of things, possibly the Nunar. We're going to get into that, but possibly. Okay, I'll bring him through. Okay, right, fine. Thank you. <laughs> hi, everybody. This is Jane. Hi, Jane. Quasar. Hi, I'm Bill hi, I'm Billy's uh, companion and business partner here, and it only takes uh, when when this happens when uh, Billy leaves his body, he actually leaves his body. You know, it's not like a regular channeling where the other person that's here right now is still there in body. They actually exchange souls, per se. So, so he kind of goes Zora, to hollow earth? Yes. Wow. Well, wherever, wherever Zora is, and then, I mean, wherever, yeah, Zora was, and then Zora will come here. And uh, Zora can explain that more here. Here is Zora. Hello, Zora. Indeed, beloved masters. Hello, Welcome. nice, nice to have you back. Indeed, it was a wonderful to be back. It was a great show last week. A lot of people got a lot of information out of that. So, you Even free? It was, I just want to remind our listeners real quick. If you guys have any questions for Zaria, uh, you know, go to our chat room at lightsinthenight.tv and we'll put your uh, your questions through, or call us at 888-565-1470. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too, if you want to look at more about what Billy and Zora is talking about. All you have to do is go to hollowearth.com. Yeah. And it's a lot no, of information. You have to go to Hollow Earth Network. Oh, sorry com. about that. Hollow Earth Network. I got this one wrong on here. Okay, great. Hollowearthnetwork.com. Okay. Do you have any questions? Do, do you, now that we're talking about this, where you're from in Hollow Earth, do you have websites and 
and and phones and all of that, or is it just more telepathic? In uh, Hollow Earth, you have what is called uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm speaking of the computers. Um, oh, yeah. Amino. Amino, amino acid computer. That's what I'm going to say. And uh, they are far superior to yours. Anyway, uh, as far as the, what was the question? <laughs> your question. Communication. Uh, communication. Yes, just your your mode of communications across in the Hollow Earth. Yeah. Across however, there's telepathy. That's what I and, thought. Uh, of course. And uh, you people on the surface, you have the same ability. You've just never been taught it. Right. I have another question. Um, back in the times, is the, you know, we are under the belief that there was a civilization called Atlantis. Um, Indeed. Yes, were you guys in more contact with people of Atlantis? Was that a different experience than just we humans now? Atlantis was a conquering uh, culture, and uh, Lemuria were very passive and uh, very uh, nonviolent. So um, we did not get along quite well with Atlantis. But the Lemurians, you did. They were pa they were more peaceful beings. Of course. Oh, nice. You understand the uh, the continent of Lemuria is what you consider your Pacific Ocean basin. Right, and Atlantis was was a um, an island on off the coast of Virginia Beach, Virginia, approximately 150 miles straight out to the east would be the west coast of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to it? Out of conquest, they destroyed their own continent. I see. Wow. Are we sort of on the same path? And how does that affect you? Well, understand, in 1947, actually 1945, you go back further, in 1945, there were two explosions that were... Uh, discovered, uh, uh, monitored, if you will, uh, over the, uh, uh, the continent of Japan, or the island of Japan, and also uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And when those exploded, it got our attention. And we sent forth to the surface uh, some of our flugerods, uh, which we would be termed as uh, flying saucers, and we sent them in fleet uh, formation to the surface to um, observe what had taken place. And of course, that was the time that we used, that uh, the surface world uh, got our attention and our uh, um, uh, undivided attention, if you will, because understand the continuation of nuclear testing or in the event of a nuclear war, would cause havoc in the hollow earth. Mm -hmm. And this cannot be allowed. So understand these. All of your nuclear weapons, and, and what is termed as your uh, nuclear power stations and things of this nature, are, are constantly being observed by our peoples because we cannot allow... Uh, the poisoning of the atmosphere because eventually we would have to deal with it when it comes to the north and south polar openings. And consequently, we will not allow you to destroy yourselves with such a manner. Oh, good. Can I ask a question? Um, how would a regular human from the surface be received and treated if they were to find themselves in the hollow earth? Well, understand. You do not come to the hollow earth unless you are invited. How do we get an invitation? By asking. I would love an invitation to hollow earth. As would I. I'd like to see you the would, animals there. It, here is the, what the criteria for entering into our domain. One, you cannot take any 
weapons with you whatsoever. No weapons. You must have a harmonious heart. Check. You must have... Check. It's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you must have no thoughts of malice of any sort. Check. And uh, therefore... If you, if you meet this criteria, then you would be allowed to enter into the hollow earth. Understand, we allowed Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd to enter into our domain, where reason for was to parley with him and to give him information about our existence and things of this nature. And, of course, we have also allowed, we did at one time, allow a vessel of, uh, of another nation uh, it was a Nazi U-boat called the uh, U-boat 209, and it was uh, met at the North Pole yeah, opening back in 1947, and actually 1945. And, okay. Um, can we, we interrupt uh, you for a second, Zara? We have a caller. I'm not sure if it's someone on the line that has a question for you or what. Can we uh, patch our caller in? Indeed. Okay. Yes, my, name, my name is Jerry. Okay. And I, I was listening to the show, and I'd like to know, can a common person get an invitation? Can you what? May a, can a common person, a common, like an everyday service like human, myself. can they get an invitation to the hollow earth? Indeed. All you have to do is by trying. And who, who and extends the invitation? How do I try? Well, you understand, when you go to do north, as it is reckoned, and you find that the... Uh, uh, the atmosphere or the uh, the temperature has uh, risen above the zero as you go as you go toward the opening, and when you get to a certain point, you will be met by a flugerad or a flying saucer, if you will. In, in, in incidentally, that will be my ship, and uh, we will address you at that point if you are of noble character. And you, uh, and when I mean noble character, one of harmony. It doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter whether you're one of a rich harmonious or heart poor or whatever. As long as you meet the criteria for entering, and your desire is honest, and you, we we would know this. Um, we would know that you are desiring to live a better life, and uh, you would be allowed to enter into hollow earth. What if I couldn't quite make it up to the North Pole and let's say I was of a... It is very difficult at this present time because your government is monitoring the North and South Polar openings. And so is Russia. So it would be difficult for you to go there unnoticed. Well, could you come and pick me up? <laughs> <laughs> Understand what is taking place in the Arctic right now. You have what is termed as a uh, melting of the polar ice cap. Yes? Yes. And many people are alarmed by this. Or do not be alarmed. It is being melted in certain areas to allow, at a, at a future time, to allow even cruise ships to enter. Hmm. What is the rank or authority is there anything like that in the hollow earth or they're like uh do you have like rulers or how how is how we is the hollow earth governed that's the council of 12. okay and uh, that is what you, what you might consider a government yeah, do they have a term of office say, like four years government. or is it constant no it is not a you do not have a um uh, uh, a length of time to be a uh, council member. Uh, it is uh, as long as you wish to be. And when you're in hollow earth... Indeed. And there is no death, do you choose how long you want to remain there in that form? Is, is it choice? Well, I'll give you a, for instance, my beloved Zorea, by your understanding, would be 1,863 years old. Oh, my. Spring chicken. Yeah. On the surface, 63. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. But 
Got Listen, it. Thank you, every every second, you you do a call every <laughs> every every second Saturday. When is the next call? And we'd like to have that number for those people who want to listen to that number, listen to what you have to say. Oh, are you speaking to about the call um, that yeah. will be transpired this Saturday? Right. Is it this Saturday? Indeed. Okay. It is 9 a.m. Pacific uh, Daylight Time, and uh, it will be for two hours. And uh, also... Uh, I will also mention there will be another call on Sunday for healing. Mm -hmm. I will be doing healings on Sunday. What time on Sunday? Hmm? 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Daylight Time. 8 o'clock. I will be doing a healing. I will be doing healings and also uh, receiving testimonies of such. How generous of you. What is the number to call into that? It would be the same number such uh, that you would call in for the one on Saturday. And that would be 347-637-2383. So people can, on Sunday, when they call in, what type of healing work do you do? It matters not. It just works. I think we count down to a minute. Yeah, Yeah. we're about to wrap up here. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we really... uh, we really appreciated hearing from you. And just to our, our viewers again, check us out on lightsinthenight.tv and send us your UFO stories, alien stories, anything uh, anything like that to ufo at amp.tv. That's our email. And be sure to call us at 888-565-1470. Well, it's been great. Thank you, Billy, for being here for the second week. And again, your website is www.hollowearthnetwork.com. Indeed. Thank you so much to both of you. When we expand to an hour, we'll bring you back. Yep, we'll have you back on. Thank you so much. All right, tune in next week. Same time, same place. And next week we have uh, Rabbi. Oh, yeah, we have Rabbi Jenny on next week. Okay, Okay, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and watching. The Lights in the Night Show with Russell Johnson. Today's show can be seen on lightsinthenight.tv. And remember to send your pictures and videos to UFO at amp2.tv. And perhaps they will be used on the show. Join us next week as we bring you more information on UFO sightings and aliens that your government doesn't want you to know about. Keep the information flowing and we will see you next week on The Lights in the Night Show with Russell Johnson. You've been listening to Lights in the Night. Visit our website, lightsinthenight.tv. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Visit our email at ufo at amp2.tv. You want to join us next week at 6 p.m. Lights in the Night. Talk 1470, WWNN, Papa.